We are very familiar with our own ways of life and the lives of others around us. Although in this vast world there are many different cultures and lifestyles and some of them are completely unique. From a tribe that was recently munching on human flesh to the tribe that is able to plunge to depths of over 30 meters to hunt for fish, here are 15 people who live a strange life. Number 15. Vanuatu Tribe It turns out that this tiny Pacific island nation has got some seriously wild stories to tell. Let's start with the juicy stuff, cannibalism. That's right folks, the people of Vanuatu were still munching on human flesh as recently as 1969. And get this, apparently the first British missionaries who arrived in 1839 were killed and eaten on the island now known as Ermongo. In case your curiosity is striking, Vanuatu's customary recipe suggests that the standard cooking time for a human is three to five hours. But don't worry, They've since put down the carving knives and have turned to more conventional cooking methods, so no need to worry about becoming the main course at dinner time. But that's not even half of it. Over on Tana Island, we've got a tribe that's got some serious prince fever. These folks are straight up worshipping Prince Philip like he's the second coming of Jesus. We get it, he was a charming fellow and all, but come on. These guys believe he's a reincarnation of an ancient warrior who left the island to fight a war. And apparently, they're so into him that they mourned his death with some serious ritual wailing and ceremonial dancing. Hey, if it works for them, who are we to judge? And let's not forget about bungee jumping. Sure, the rest of the world might think they invented it, but the people of Vanuatu have been doing their own version of it for centuries. They build towering wooden platforms up to 30 meters high and attach vines to their ankles before taking the plunge. It's like the Olympics of adrenaline junkies, Vanuatu style. From unconventional cuisine to prince worship and even death-defying leaps, Vanuatu might be small, but it's big on crazy stories. Number 14. Sama Bajau Tribe AKA the Sea Gypsies, these people live life on the high seas, quite literally, and lead a life that's so out of the world, you'll feel like you're living in an alternate universe. While most of us are content to live on land and occasionally take a dip in the ocean, the Bajau people spend their entire lives on their boats, wandering from one spot to another, braving the waves of the open sea in search of fish and other treasures of the sea. They're basically the Aquaman of real life. But don't be fooled by their itinerant lifestyle, because these sea gypsies are some of the best sailors in the world. They navigate the ferocious waves with ease, adapting to their maritime environment like true oceanic acrobats. And let's not forget about their unique diving skills. They can hold their breath longer than your average human and plunge to depths of over 30 meters to hunt for pelagic fish, pearls, and sea cucumbers, a delicacy among the tribe. And how do they get so good at diving, you ask? Well, they deliberately rupture their eardrums at an early age, bleed from their ears and nose, and spend a week lying down because of the dizziness, just so they can dive without pain. Talk about dedication to their craft. But here's the kicker. The Bajau aren't recognized as citizens of any country. That's right. They're like a floating state of their own, navigating the waters and constantly searching for a place to call home. Even though they hail from the Sulu Archipelago, which is technically part of the Philippines, the government doesn't acknowledge them as Filipino citizens. And it's not just the Philippines. Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia all refuse to recognize the Bajau. Talk about being lost at sea. And if you think that's crazy, wait till you hear about the folklore surrounding the Bajau tribe. According to legend, there's even a Bajau boy who fell asleep in the water because he was having so much fun diving. Now that's some serious dedication to sea life. So if you ever find yourself lost at sea, just remember the Bajau and their incredible ability to make a home on the water, even if the rest of the world can't quite figure out where they belong. Number 13. Lip Plate Tribe Celebrities aren't the masterminds behind the lip fillers, because a tribe in Africa did it before the surgeries even became a thing. That's right, ladies. Forget about contouring and highlighting, because the real key to looking fabulous is a giant wooden or pottery disc in your lower lip. And women choose to do that voluntarily. These young ladies are so dedicated to their appearance that they undergo a painful piercing process and spend months stretching their lips to accommodate a wooden or pottery disc. And why, you might ask? Well, it's not just for the sheer joy of being able to carry around a dinner plate on their face, although that is a perk. It is also a status symbol. The bigger the plate, the more desirable a bride a girl becomes. And over time, they have found some practical uses too. 
Once the lip is healed, women can even let their babies play tug-of-war with their face without any discomfort. And while it might affect their speech a bit, changing an S sound to a TH sound, it doesn't stop them from communicating, unless they're trying to sing the national anthem or something. Oh, and let's not forget about the added bonus of slowing down their gait, making them look extra graceful as they stroll around the village. Number 12. Miguel Restrepo Picture this. A dimly lit, underground paradise complete with a TV, stove, fan, and even a pet dog, with no one else around. No, it's not a scene from a dystopian movie. It's the real-life living situation of Miguel Restrepo and his wife in Medellin, Colombia. For over two decades, this former drug addict has been calling an abandoned sewer his home. And it's nothing like the lizard sewer layer from the Spider-Man movies. This man has got style. He's put work in to renovate his underground abode, making it more cozy than your average apartment. Sure, the dimensions may be on the smaller side, but that's just a minor inconvenience when you're living rent-free in one of the world's most famous cities. It's like a little slice of paradise, only with a little more sewage. But who needs fresh air and sunlight when you've got a comfy bed and a loyal pup by your side? Number 11. The Asaro Tribe Well, well, well. Look at these mud men. The Asaro Tribe from Papua New Guinea, smearing themselves with mud and wearing oversized mud masks. And you'd think it's part of some skincare routine. Far from it, actually. Legend has it that the Asaro were once attacked by a stronger tribe, so they decided to coat themselves in mud and pretend to be ghost spirits. And somehow, it worked. The other tribe got so scared they ran away. So, the Asaro continued the tradition of smearing mud on themselves to avoid wars and bloodshed. Hey, if it works, it works, right? But the real piece de resistance of the Asaro are their oversized mud masks, weighing in at a hefty 20 to 25 pounds. They're so heavy that the wearer's collarbone has to support the weight, which is not the most comfortable fashion accessory. And don't even get us started on the handcrafted masks. Each one is unique and has its own message etched inside. It's like a secret club for people who like to wear heavy mud masks who have their own set of beliefs. Speaking of beliefs and traditions, number 10. Win Van Chen Move over Rapunzel, there's a new hair icon in town, and he's a 92-year-old Vietnamese man named Win Van Chien. But this isn't just any hair we're talking about. Chien has been growing his dreadlocks for nearly 80 years, reaching an insane 5 meters in length, and he hasn't cut it ever since. Impressive, right? Yeah, but he hasn't washed or combed them either. Still find it impressive? Win could have been an excellent pick for any shampoo ad if it wasn't the hygiene issue surrounding an impressive feat. Although Chien did have to trim his hair when he was in school, he decided to quit after third grade and never looked back. According to him, he was called by divine power to grow his hair, and his unwashed locks are now a manifestation of this calling. And let's not forget the fact that Chien believes his hair is the key to his longevity. Forget about eating healthy or exercising regularly. Just don't cut or wash your hair, and you'll live to be 92 years old like Chien. His words, not ours. And you might save a lot of time as well. Chien follows a faith known as Dua, also known as the coconut religion, which is named after its founder who claimed he survived solely on coconuts to maintain his vitality. Beware though, this faith is banned in Vietnam and considered a false belief. Chien's fifth son, Luam, helps him manage his giant locks and he takes it just as seriously as his father. And we promise you, it does get weirder than this. Number 9. Nainats of Siberia Nainats have taken a page from Santa's handbook. The Nainats people are like the ultimate nomads, except instead of a fancy van or a sleek airstream, they travel with their trusty reindeer. The Nainats make their home in the Yamal Peninsula, which is basically translated to the end of the world, with good reason and a tragic past. It's a bleak, frozen wasteland where temperatures can drop to negative 50 degrees Celsius. If that isn't enough to make you appreciate your heating system, nothing ever will. Back in the day, the Nanets were forced into a collective farm system by Stalin and the Soviet Union. But thankfully, they've since returned to their indigenous reindeer herding roots. The Nanets' conical tents, called Chum or Maya, are made of reindeer hide and look like something straight out of a fantasy novel. The Nanets have a sacred reindeer, which can't be used for transport or food until it can no longer walk. And speaking of food, the Nainets are obsessed with their reindeer meat. They eat it raw, frozen, or boiled, and wash it down with the blood of a freshly slaughtered reindeer. They live and breathe reindeer, quite literally. Also, the Nainets are always on the move, traveling along ancient migration routes. 
They're basically the OG nomads, and they know how to pack a sled like it's nobody's business. At night, they circle up their sleds around the tomb like a campfire sing-along, except instead of marshmallows, they're roasting fish. Number 8. Chimbu Tribe Your high school history book might not have a chapter on the Chimbu Tribe, and all we can say is that everyone is missing out. Everything about them is fantastic, including the origins of their name. Believe it when we say their moniker comes from an Aussie explorer's eavesdropping skills. Apparently, when they heard the locals saying Simbu, which means surprise in Kuman language, they were like, that's it, we'll call these guys the Chimbu tribe from now on. But it's their traditional art form that sets them apart. These Chimbu folks have got a dance that is sure to give you some goosebumps, the skeleton dance. It's not just any ordinary dance, mind you. It's meant to scare the pants off their enemy tribes and make them think they're dealing with some supernatural beings. Can you say bad No wonder they live in rugged mountain valleys between 1600 and 2400 meters, and in male-female segregated houses. They've got to protect themselves from any wimpy outsiders who can't handle their fierce moves. Their traditional homes are something to marvel at too. Forget about modern architecture. These folks live in oval or rectangular homes with dirt floors and low thatched roofs, and walls woven from flattened reeds. And don't forget about the communal men's houses set on ridges for defensive purposes. That's man caves on a whole nother level. Number 7. Pataruni Ghosh Introducing the one and only Water Woman. No, not a superhero, just a lady who spends more time in water than any Olympian swimmer in training. Pataruni Ghosh, the queen of soaking, has been sitting in the lake for 12 to 14 hours a day, every day for the past two decades. Michael Phelps sounds like an amateur right now. But why does she do it, you ask? Pataruni has a rare disease that causes her body to feel like it's on fire. The poor lady can't afford proper treatment, so she's resorting to find alternatives to mitigate her illness. Her strange lifestyle has also altered her consumption of food too. When Pataruni isn't busy soaking, she enjoys a little rice and veggies, but don't expect a feast. Due to her inactive lifestyle, her appetite is quite childlike. And her family? They're so supportive, they even bring her food to the lake so they can all have an underwater picnic. Despite her strange lifestyle, Pataruni isn't alone in the lake. Her family and the villagers come to check up on her, probably hoping to catch a glimpse of their local real-life mermaid. Some of them even think she's going to become the lake's soul in a Disney fashion. Alongside her local celebrity hood, Pataruni's story is a reminder that some people are dealing with unimaginable pain and suffering. Let's hope she gets the help she needs soon and can trade in her water throne for a real-life recliner. But of course, she isn't the only one leading a strange lifestyle. Number 6. Himba Tribe Himba Tribe from Africa needs its own episodes on National Geographic Special because they live one heck of a lifestyle. Living in northern Namibia and southern Angola, they're semi-nomadic, pastoralist people who speak OTG Himba, a language that no one else understands and their skincare routine is particularly fascinating. They use Otij's paste, a mixture of butterfat and okra pigment, which they smear all over themselves to protect against the harsh climate. The Himba's wealth is determined by the number of their cattle, so we can guess that means they're all cow millionaires. The real focus is on the livestock, which is tended to by the men, while the women do all the hard work like carrying water, plastering homes with cow manure, and taking care of the kids. Sounds like a pretty sweet deal for the men. Yet women don't get to use the water they've carried on their backs for bathing purposes. The women can't use water to wash themselves, so they take a daily smoke bath. They literally stand over a smoldering bowl of herbs and sweat it out under a blanket. Their religion is equally intriguing. They believe in animism and communicate with their god through a holy fire, keeping it blaze the whole day. But we're yet to witness the deepest pits of some truly bizarre lifestyles. Subscribers Pick it's time for today's subscriber's pick. One of our subscribers has shared this image with us and we're left puzzled and concerned. When someone dreams of scuba diving, they expect to come across Nemo or some weird looking octopus, but not this guy. He came across this guy, meditating in the middle of the ocean, shattering all our ideas about mermaids. Maybe this is the Baju boy who fell asleep in the water because he was having so much fun diving. Remember to comment down below with the hashtag subscriber's pick and let us know what you think. Now on to the next topic. Number 5. Derek Nance Time for Gordon Ramsay to be dethroned. There's a new chef in town and he's cooking up something that will make your stomach churn. Meet Derek Nance, a man who takes the term farm to table to a whole new level. While his suburban home may seem unremarkable at first glance, 
What's inside is enough to make even the most adventurous foodies gag. Inside Nance's house, you won't find your typical frozen dinners or canned goods. No, instead you'll find an entire sheep hanging out in his fridge like it's a butcher shop. Every single part of the sheep is hanging there, from the spleen to the gallbladder, to the bone marrow, which he refers to as the cheesecake of the sheep. Yep, Derek would have a hard time gaining subscribers if he finally decides to make a mukbang YouTube channel. Nance doesn't just eat any old sheep though. No, he takes it upon himself to personally vet the sheep and make sure they're grass-fed and pasture-raised. Because apparently, checking out the animal's vitality and vibrancy before eating it is important. Nance's diet may seem bizarre, but he swears by it. He claims that eating raw meat has cured his chronic fatigue syndrome and other health issues. If you're thinking that this diet sounds like a recipe for disaster, you're not alone. All in all, Nance's lifestyle may not be for everyone, but hey, to each their own. As long as he's not breaking any laws, which apparently he's not, he can continue to chew on those sheep bones to his heart's content. We'd have a hard time accepting that dinner invitation, though. Number 4. Huli Wigman It's time to meet the Huli Wigman, a tribe from the highlands of Papua New Guinea who are famous for their luscious locks and unique lifestyle. According to the legend, they descended from the one man named Huli, a pro mastermind farmer who became the first person to cultivate the Huli territory. But that's not why they're on our list today. The unmarried men in the tribe have a bizarre way of preparing themselves for adulthood, and we're definitely not talking about learning to file taxes. They are raised to believe that their mothers and sisters are dangerous witches who will suck away their masculinity. So, at a young age, they are separated from their families and join the Haroli bachelor cult, where they spend up to three years purifying themselves with oils and herbs. After their purification period, the Huli boys emerge with a full head of hair that is then harvested to make their famous wigs. For every day wear, the Huli wig men don a lighter colored wig and hardly any face paint. But when it's time to party, they break out the darker wigs and paint their faces yellow, red, and white. It's like a tribal version of the Met Gala, and the tribe shows up super camp. You know who's not showing up to the party super camp? The next person on our list. Number 3. Tom the Part-Time Dog Meet Tom Peters a man who's barking mad for puppies, so much so that he likes to dress up like one and even act like one. Tom enjoys living his life as a dog, complete with crawling on all fours, sleeping in a cage, and munching on dog biscuits. Tom and his fellow pup enthusiasts are the stars of a Channel 4 documentary called The Secret Life of Human Pups. You might find this the most weird thing on the internet, but Tom is quite devoted to his canine lifestyle. Yes, that's not the only lifestyle he's thriving through. You see, Tom might not be super relatable in many ways, but he's also an average Joe. Yep, he has a normal daytime job as a lighting and theater technician. And when the lights go out, that's when the wagging tail comes out. Tom isn't going through a midlife crisis either, just by the way. A part of him truly wants to live like a dog without any unnecessary judgment and hot takes on his lifestyle. In fact, by appearing in Channel 4's documentary, he aims to normalize the subculture of alternative identities. So, if you see Tom crawling around on all fours, don't worry. He's not lost, he's just living his best puppy life. Number 2. Kate Hashimoto Let's talk about Kate Hashimoto, the thrift queen of New York City. She's living proof that with a little bit of creativity, you too can survive on a meager budget of just $200 per month. Who needs furniture stores when you can just scour the dumpsters and sidewalks for discarded items? And forget about buying a bed, just stack some old yoga mats together and call it a night. But that's not all. Before you jump to any conclusions, Kate is a certified personal accountant, so she's making some big bucks. She just refuses to waste her hard-earned money on silly things like new clothes, toiletries, and even toilet paper. Nope, she's subscribed to all the freebie mailing lists and attends promotional events just to get her hands on some toothpaste and deodorant. And why bother with a washing machine or a laundromat when you can just wash your clothes in the bathtub while you shower? Save money and time. And when it comes to food, Kate has it all figured out. She's the ultimate dumpster diver, sifting through trash bags outside of restaurants and supermarkets to find some sanitary food in sealed packages. She dines on some high-quality gourmet food straight from the trash, and if her friends want to go out to eat, she just talks them out of it or hopes they'll pay for her meal. Number 1. Amar Bharati Amar Bharati is definitely the poster child for commitment. This man has been holding his hands up for 45 years straight. His dedication to his religion is really something else. If you thought holding a plank for one minute was tough, 
Then Amar Bharati is here to put you to shame. This guy left his family and job to become a monk and then decided to take things up a notch by raising his hand up. Just like that overly smart kid in every AP class, he has his hand up all the time. However, let's give credit where credit is due. This man has some serious perseverance. He's been holding that hand up for so long that he's just numb. But hey, at least he's doing it for a noble cause, to promote world peace. He believes his gesture represents his perseverance towards maintaining compassion all over the world, and pay his respects to his god, Shiva, in the process. If only everyone was committed to maintaining peace, the world would definitely be a better place. That's all we've got for today's video. See you in the next one.